Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Lavender. Today, I want to share 20 books to read in 2020. So these are books I've chosen from the past decade, books that are my favorites, that have impacted my life, and books that I think will impact your life for the better as well. I've sectioned the books into categories to make it easier to navigate. So I have self-help, personal growth books, and then some on money and productivity, some on creativity, and some on spirituality and more. So let's start with self-help. One of my favorite books of all time is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I've recommended this so many times before because it is such a good book to start with. So it is easy to read, it's not too long, and there are four main agreements. So always be impeccable with your word, don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions, and always do your best. And those four agreements, he goes deep into them and why they're important. And because there's only four, they're very easy to remember, and they're kind of like life mantras, and I remind myself of them all the time and they've made my life a lot easier. The second book you should read is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. This one is a little more dense and harder to read, but I think it is so important because it teaches you how to recognize and be aware of your own ego and how to detach yourself from the wants of your ego. So the ego in you is the part that wants more, 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 the part that will never be satisfied, the part that gives into fear, and just all of these things that are not helping you. So this book teaches you how to recognize that ego and how to not be a victim to your ego. The third book I want to recommend is Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is the book you want to read if you want to be consistent with your habits this year. It talks about how and why habits are formed and how you can use that information to make or break any habit that you want. The next book I want to recommend is Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Carol Dweck. So this is the book that's all about the growth mindset, what the growth mindset is compared to what a fixed mindset is and why you want to have a growth mindset, how it's going to help you in life. So much of why certain people excel and grow over others is because they have a different mindset. So this book goes deep into what makes up a growth mindset. The next book that will also be so helpful for your mindset is The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. This book is made up of a bunch of lessons, values, and parables on why people are successful. It has so many success stories. It's one of the first self-help books I read, and it's such a good book to lay the right foundation for your mindset and your habits moving forward. The next book you should read is a classic called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. This is a book that's been on the bestsellers list for decades, so it is a crowd favorite. It is one of those books that everyone should read. The lessons are so smart and they're so impactful. They're still relevant to this day. Following that, another book you must read is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I used to say Eckhart Tolle and I don't know why. Someone corrected me and said it's Eckhart Tolle. Anyway, this book is another classic and it's all about being mindful of the present moment, why it is so important, why the present moment is the only real thing that you have. The past and the future are just illusions in your mind and reading this, understanding this concept on a deep level will release so much stress and worry from your life. It will just help you be happier and more joyful in the present moment of your life. Another book you should read is The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. I've recommended this one so many times because it's so good. This book is about the power of compounding, the power of compounding effects, compounding your actions, compounding habits. And the lesson is if you do a small thing each day, like a small little positive thing, like the effects will compound over time so that you make big changes. And it's such a powerful lesson that is so key to success. The last book in this category is The Power of Vulnerability by Brene Brown. So Brene Brown has that TED talk on vulnerability. She's written so many amazing books since then. And this book, The Power of Vulnerability, I heard it in audiobook form because I think it's her giving lectures on vulnerability. And vulnerability is something that people need to talk about more because once you realize how important it is to be vulnerable, you develop better relationships in your life. You become more confident in expressing yourself. You also get better at taking risks, at being brave. And those are things that you need to be successful and grow in life.
All right, moving on to the next category of money and productivity books. So the first book I recommend is called The Richest Man in Babylon. This is a super old book. I, it might be even like a hundred years old, but it contains stories and parables really to teach you how to have like a positive money mindset, to be financially literate, to see money in a healthier way. This book, I just enjoyed it so much because I enjoy metaphors and stories and I feel like rather than being a practical book it's a book that uses stories to really ingrain really valuable lessons in your mind the next book i recommend is also going to help your money mindset but this one's more modern so this one's called you are a badass at making money by jen sincero and this book is so so helpful in helping you rewrite your limiting beliefs about money so i felt like my mindset changed so much it like transformed my mindset about money after reading this book and i just think it's something that more people should read we should all be more financially savvy financially literate and just have a healthier money mindset the next book I recommend is Getting Things Done by David Allen. So this is a book for you if you need help in productivity, if you have so many things you want to do but you don't know what to do first, how to organize your tasks, how to have a system of getting things done. So this book helped me just prioritize things. It just, he lays out a system that is so helpful. What emails to tackle first, what tasks to tackle first. It's so helpful for people who are not naturally organized and even if you are relatively organized, Organized, you'll learn a lot from the process laid out in this book. The next book is another favorite of mine, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. This is one that inspired my whole journey through minimalism and decluttering, learning to keep only what sparks joy and let go of the things that I don't need anymore, let go, say goodbye and thank you, thank you next to just anything that is holding me back. And this book is applied to physical things, but it can also apply to non physical things in your life and I put it under the category of productivity because I really feel like you can be more productive when your space is clear when you have your life together and just having this KonMari mindset Moving on to books on creativity now. So the first book I would recommend is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Stephen Pressfield is such a great author for creatives. He talks about the war we have as creatives against resistance, procrastination, whatever that thing is that holds us back from doing our work, from creating, from taking action. And so that's what The War of Art is about. And that has helped me just have a stronger mindset in my work, in my career, in creating. Another book on creativity that is more uplifting and inspirational is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Elizabeth Gilbert is one of my favorite writers. This is one of my favorite books and it just makes you see creativity from such a magical point of view and this book is for everyone, not just people who do creativity for their job because all humans are creative and she talks about you know creativity as a hobby to give you joy, to enhance your life and it's just an amazing book. The final book in creativity is more of a practical process type book. So it's The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. This is a book you want to read if you are a creative and you want to tap into, like tap deeper into your creativity because there are journaling prompts, exercises, a weekly system. I think it's a 12 week program that you go through. And this is actually the book where Morning Pages originated. So Julia Cameron introduced the idea of Morning Pages to write three pages of longhand stream of consciousness is journaling every morning to help just like open up that channel to creativity so this is just a great system I did it I think two years ago so if you want more of a systematic approach to tapping into more creativity then read the artist way Lastly, let's move on to books on spirituality and beyond. So the first book you gotta read is The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. That is a book about your soul, your spirit, and it also helps you recognize who you are on the outside, the surface level you versus the deep core of yourself. And it's just one of those books on spirituality that I really enjoyed. The next book I recommend is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. And I honestly recommend anything by Deepak Chopra. And my favorite way to read his books is by listening to his audiobooks, listening to him speak because 
I just am such a big fan of him. I love his voice. He makes me feel so calm, so zen. He seems so wise and he's just a classic. The next book I want to recommend intertwines health with spirituality. So it's called The Anatomy of the Spirit by Carolyn Miss. And I honestly had two books in mind for this slot in the 20 books. So you'll get an extra book. Another book that is similar that is also in the same realm is called You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Those are two books that I highly recommend if you are just going through any health issues, especially chronic health issues that doctors and Western medicine can't explain because the idea is a lot of chronic issues like health issues stem from emotional or spiritual pain and trauma. And this is an area where I know not every Everyone agrees with or understands because there's so much we still don't understand about science and health and medicine right but I just think it's so fascinating because these are stories of real people who have like healed in just spiritual ways or just different ways than you would typically hear of the last book on this list which makes the 20th book is on astrology so it's called the inner sky by Stephen Forrest and this is one of my favorite books that I've read because I love astrology it was the intro book to help me dive deeper into what all of this stuff means the stars the planets just your birth chart and that one is more of a personal interest book but if you are interested in astrology like that is the book to start with because it's just so fascinating all right so those are 20 of my favorite slash most impactful books that you should read in 2020 if you want more books i have a whole page on my website listing my favorite books and i try to organize it in different categories and i also really love audiobooks i didn't get to talk about the audiobooks that I loved because I chose books that I thought would change your life and help you change your mindset all that stuff but I honestly really enjoy listening to like memoirs for example Ali Wong's audiobook Dear Girls Kevin Hart's audiobook Trevor Noah's book JVN Jonathan Van Ness's book the guy from Queer Eye and I just love listening to something funny and a life story while I'm driving so I'll list those recs down below as well but I hope that this is a good list for you to start with and I'm wishing you you all the best in 2020. I hope these books help you expand your mind, change your life, and I hope you make it a daily habit to read consistently, whether it's a little bit each day or a little bit each week because consistency is what matters most. Lastly, if you haven't heard, I'm doing a 10 day new year challenge that you could sign up for. It's basically a free email series where each day for 10 days, you'll be emailed a relatively easy prompt that will help you take action towards becoming the best version of yourself and creating the life that you've always wanted to live. So if you wanna join the new year challenge, I'll have the link down below. Love you so much and sending you so much love and light for your life. Am I cheesy? Yeah, a little bit, but I don't care. Bye!